Hi there, and welcome to another interview. Today, I've got the fabulous Mark with me, and I'm going to ask the question that I ask absolutely every guest. Hey, Mark, why did you become carnivore? Hi, Steve. Hi, everybody. All my life, struggled from about 10 years old. I've done all the way through until I was 57, various diets, managed to lose weight a few times, but it always went back on, plus a few extra pounds every time, which I think most people can relate to. And in August 22, my health had down spiraled drastically. I'd already had a pulmonary edema and I'd have water coughing up out of my lungs in the middle of the night and all sorts of issues. I'd an enlarged heart, all sorts of problems. But August 22, diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. By the time that had come, I'd ended up with 11 drugs. I had gout. I had high blood pressure, five lots of meds for that. I'd then been put on two lots of meds for diabetes. None of it was working. My condition was just getting worse and worse and worse. So I just started to do what a lot of people do and started to see if I could find out a better way of doing this myself. And many, many years before, 15 years before, I'd done bodybuilding. And weirdly enough, I'd actually found that I could get lean and better when I was on a low-carb diet. So I ventured down that avenue anyway, found the ketogenic diet. I started making the changes after I'd done some research. And then after about three months or so, I got to the December 2022, and I had my bloods checked. I'd lost almost three stone, and I was quite happy with the ketogenic diet. My blood sugars had gone from 115 down to 39. I was no longer even pre-diabetic. I was now considered to be non-diabetic at all. A lot of my health conditions had improved. Some had completely gone, but, you know, it was getting better. But I, was, I just wanted to put my foot in the water and see if it was there anymore, that the less carbs I had, the better I seemed to get. So I decided to start looking into the carnivore diet, or I called it black belt keto, really. So. I went and put my foot in the water about a year or so ago now. And I just slowly but surely got rid of the veg, got rid of the fruit, got rid of everything that was even on keto that was allowed. Whittled away at them because I figured if I did it slowly, I'd probably have less problems with my digestion and stuff like that and just changing all my dietary sort of uh, food. And um, it went through really smoothly. I never really had any issues at all. A little bit of cramp at night, but I just upped to the amount of salt I was having, Himalayan salt, and all of a sudden that seemed to stop it. That's fine. No more cramps. And then my weight went into free fall. But um, I'll go into that later because I only think the weight loss is, is 10% of the problem. People can see the 10% in your photographs. It's the 90% of the changes in my health that you can't take a photograph of and show people. So I've got to the present day, I'm now weighing in at 12 stone 4 from a starting rate of 19 stone 12. I had a 42 waist and that 30 waist. And literally every single health condition I had has gone. Everything from my mental health to issues from head to toe. I don't think I could travel more than six inches down my body before there was, there was an issue with my eyes, there was an issue with my neck, issue with my breathing abdominal pains, shooting pains in my torso that I could not, couldn't understand why I had them. I was getting dizzy spells. If I sat down at work just to have a drink, I'd be falling asleep at work. And when I got home and I, got, I tried to go to sleep at night, I couldn't sleep and I'd sleep out near a bit of acid reflux. I'd be coughing. It, the list was on and on and on. And um, yeah, it's been completely life-changing as far as I'm concerned. I can't imagine... Any, there was no medicine that was doing any improvements, let alone reversing and changing things. Yeah. Now, you mentioned before we spoke on record here quite a few things, actually. So I just want to go into a couple of the issues that you sent me in the email, like gout, for instance. What what happened with gout? I used to get um, a lot of ballooning in my knee and my ankles. Um, and I think, I've been a decorator for years and years. And I figured a lot of people have got rid of carpets. And I thought, well, we're always kneeling around and crawling around on hard floors where we go and work now. Maybe the knees are to do with that. And my knees used to balloon up to triple the size. And um, a lot of that was water retention. Um, but I was also diagnosed with gout. I'd had three cortisone injections in my knee and they refused to do any more because it seemed to help it temporarily. But it would keep happening. Um, but I was 
steered away from anything like red meat because you shouldn't have red meat, you know, and it seems to be everything I was ever advised not to have. If I did the complete opposite, things seem to cure themselves. But I was on allopurinol and I had to keep increasing the dosage because I was having more and more problems. I had a gout problem going on in my right, in my elbow as well. That was happening. Bit in my toes. That's it. I had to just kind of live with that. It just seemed I had to live with that. But as I ventured into the ketogenic diet, I've noticed now I'm eating all this meat now. I was just relying on the allopurinol to do things. But I thought, I'm not sure if I need this. So I just got them to start reducing the dosage. And all of a sudden, I didn't need it at all anymore. And when I stepped into the into the carnivore side of things, no outbreaks of any kind. I didn't even have a final outbreak, which they say can happen with, you know, oxalates. It just went and it's never come back. Yeah. Do you, do you think that's a food you've taken out rather than red meat being magical and fixing it? Yes. Most definitely. I think it's more to do with removing oxalates from, from my diet because it just seemed to be as they were decreased, everything else, the other foods were staying the same. So it was the foods I was excluding from my diet that I think was actually doing the repair, not what I'd included because I'd always eaten that stuff all my life. I'd always eaten meat. I'd always eaten butter. So it can only be what I take out of the diet that was having the effect. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, gout is one of the things that it, it's quite a sort of low level thing that people talk about, but it's the bane of many people's lives. So that's, so, that's pretty good. So, yeah, exactly. It's for, and people have said that quite a lot. You also mentioned, you know, your type 2 diabetes, your diabetes. Was, was you on any medications for diabetes then? Originally, I was on metformin, which did seem to upset my stomach a bit. But then they put me on a one called a Sakato, something like which was the time release version of it. But they also mm-hmm. left me on the metformin. So it supposedly sorted my, my diabetes out. But by then, I'd already made myself determined I'm not going to spend my life on drugs. And now I'm looking at an 11, 11 drugs and I'm, I'm asking my doctor, okay, so this is wrong with my health and that's wrong with my health. Can you tell me what the side effects are of these 11 drugs combined together? What, what are they going to cause? Has there been any research on someone taking three of them together, let alone 11 of them together? And they just said, well, no, you just need them for your treatments. And I thought, no, I don't really want to live down that path. So it was the same thing. I took it in my own hands to, um, to sort of do the research and see if I can make the changes. Because I, I honestly believe I think I had three to six months to live of how ill I was. I was so ill. It was difficult to walk my dog even on a flat surface. I'd get out of breath. And I was so sleep deprived that I was exhausted all day, all night, every single day. And I felt ill. It was rap- my health was rapidly going downhill. So it was, what have I got to lose? It's either going to work or it's not. You know, and if Absolutely. it doesn't, I'm going down that path anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. So you were on 11 medications, uh, obviously some diabetic ones. What about the high blood pressure? Are you, are you still on 11 or are you off completely all of them now? None at all for anything. All medications have been stopped slightly bit shortly because as my blood pressure came down, I was starting to contact the doctor and say, look, I'm getting dizzy spells. And they said, well, we better stop this one. We better stop that. And then eventually, around eight weeks, 10 weeks ago, the final of them, which was Ramapril, had been decreased from 10 milligram down to 5 milligram to 2.5 then stopped. So basically, all medications I have on have, over the period of that year have all been taken away. Then none of them are needed at all anymore. Yeah, and I think you make a really good point that I don't think I stress enough, so I'm going to tell myself off for not asking this question. I'm talking about it. You're right about medications. Yeah, they look at they look at the side effects for one drug. So they don't yeah. actually look at a, a cocktail. At that. I mean, that's what the media uses as an expression, isn't it? A cocktail of drugs. If you're on 11 medications, that would never have been studied. Like, what will these 11 medications do for each other? And I think it's a bit like... Um, you know, once you pass three, a lot of the medications are to stop the side effects of another one. And then it just snowballs, you know. So I think that's a, that's a really good point. Just for people so that if, don't... If wrong drug affects your liver or affects your kidneys, for instance, well, that one can completely affect the way the other drug works because something else is being affected already. And it's got to compile. It can't 
do anything but be negative. I, I can't see anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're not here to tell people to stop or start or prescribe or diagnose. It's just for information. But I think that's, that's something that people should consider because that's yeah. a lot of drugs. That's a lot of medications. And, and, and it, just one drug comes with a list of side effects. So then if you start yeah. mixing them, um, you're probably potentially going to get problems just, just from the medications or the mix of medications. Yeah. You made a funny remark there, actually, and I want to go back to it, that you were able to sleep at work, but not, not at night. No. So what was happening I there? I was exhausted, and I'd, somebody would bring me a coffee at work, you know, and I'd sit on my trestle just to have the coffee, and I'd find myself nodding, temporarily nodding, and I'd have to catch myself. But then at night, I'd go, I can't wait to go to bed. And then when I got to bed, things like the acid reflux would wake me up, I'd have sleep apnea, that would wake me up. So the sleep apnea was constantly not letting you get into a proper state of sleep. And before you know it, the alarm's going, it's time to get up and start and do it again. So, yeah, I couldn't, you could never get replenished with your energy when you just couldn't sleep at all. Yeah, and it, it's one of those things that is really common that people feel fatigued throughout the day but then can't sleep you know and they come to this way of eating and it all settles down there is other things you can do as well you know you, you can get more in touch with the light the light and less exposure to devices and all those sort of things i just want to clarify for people that aren't in the uk when we were talking about the weight earlier because we use what's we took in stones and pounds everyone else yeah. talks in just pounds so it was 106 pounds translated you to pounds 278 yeah. I'm down to 172. That's yeah, today. It's, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, and uh, there are people out there that say, well, everything got better just purely because you lost the weight. But I don't think that's the case. I think your health comes first yeah. and then the weight loss comes second. Do you, do you sort of tend to agree with that? Definitely, because I said at the beginning that I'd lost weight in the past and some of the health issues never went with that weight. So some of the health issues were still hanging on. I used to have dry skin and things like that. That just didn't, that was still there. If anything, that got worse because I was doing what everybody said to, to eat low fat and high carb and stuff. But my skin got worse with that. It would dry up. My elbows would crack and I don't get any of that anymore, even though my weight was low. So, and even things like when you lose that much weight, I'd accepted when I lose that much weight, I was going to have a hell of a lot of loose skin. Mm. I've got some, but that's because my weight is still to this day chipping slowly but surely away, but it's not deliberate. It's just it's just disappearing and my, my whole body composition is changing. But I've relatively no loose skin. And the skin seems far more supple. So that I I put down to it being able to go back rather than leave stretch marks, it can go back, it can return. Maybe yeah. never a hundred percent, but it, it's a lot better than it ever was before. Yeah. Now, now, for people that don't know what's going on, I actually spoke to Mark before we started and I said, I'm going to do sort of like a, a bingo list of all the things because we've got a lot of similarities and I'm marking off all the similarities because I had the dry, cracked elbow skin and I didn't even know that I did. And when I, my second marriage, the first time we shared the bathroom, my, my second wife, she just got some moisturizing lotion and stuck it on my elbows without telling me well, what are you doing she said oh the skin on your elbows really bad i tell you now with this way of with this way of eating no moisturizer really the only thing i really use is tallow soap uh just in the shower i yeah. don't put any moisturizer on it's 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 soft and it's supple and it's all down to the fact that i am eating this way nothing else but that's a good one so we're going to go into a couple of others that we've we've shared uh, okay. Could you just go talk talk to the athlete's foot about that and your toenail fungus and all yeah. this? Well, the athlete's foot I'd had for, for quite a time, and um, that seemed to then progress. I think that is connected with fungal toenail. And um, the, the fungal toenail went from the big toes and it went on to all the toes in the end. And I, I tried the, the sort of varnish type things that you can spread onto them and you put that on every day and fall now and then put another coat on the next day and so on. Uh, and then antibiotics that they put you on, which are really quite harsh antibiotics for, for athletes, uh, for fungal toenail, because it has to be there for the whole time it takes for a nail to grow. And it would disappear 
or it seemed like it had disappeared until the antibiotics were stopped. And then within weeks, it would come back again with a vengeance. So it, that never worked. And then literally as a side effect of going keto and carnivore, sugars dropped. There's nothing feeding the fungus anymore. They just, it just went by itself, completely gone. So if for nothing else, I keep the sugars out of the diet because that will feed it. It's not needed anymore. It's just gone by itself. Yeah, no and that, that's, yeah, that, that's the thing. I mean, uh, I shared all the stuff I tried just for people at home. They think, well, that's nothing. Well, when you've got athlete's foot, it is annoying, especially if you uh, want to go barefoot uh, you know, on the beach and all this sort of stuff. I tried absolutely everything. Powders in my socks, powders in my trainers, yeah. duct tape, acid, drying between my toes really rigorously, a hair dryer, all of the stuff that you're told to do. And mine actually went, I didn't even, I wasn't even thinking about it. I just started eating this way. And before I knew it, somebody pointed out, hey, your athlete's foot has gone. So it's it's amazing what you're told is permanent or you need to treat when, in fact, all you need to do is cut out the carbs, Most cut definitely. out the sugars. Yeah. It's yeah. incredible, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So we're doing well on the old bingo card, ticking off a few things. Uh, one thing I okay. haven't had was the brain fog, and you've mentioned depression and forgetfulness. Could you just sort of fill us in on those areas? I'd be at work, and I'd have to go and get something from my van. I'm only walking 20 seconds away, and the amount of times I'd get to my van to get what I had to get, and when I got there, I forgot what it was. I'd go back in the room, start doing what I was doing before I went out, just so it would trigger my memory as to what I had to do. In the end, I took a notepad in and put it in my pocket, so if I had to go to the van and get something, I'd write down on the pad what I was going there to get. Just to remind me. But what I couldn't understand was other than health, which was a quick slope downwards, everything in life was good. Family life was good. Work was good. Everything like that was good. For some reason, I was so depressed. It sounds really quite morbid, but I went to bed every single night prior to, you know, being told in August 22 what had happened. I went to bed hoping I wasn't going to wake up. And I just, it was somewhere I couldn't even explain it in myself. I couldn't, I try and look at myself and work out, well, why do you feel like this? Couldn't explain it. It just was. That's how I felt. I didn't want to wake up the next day. And then as the keto went in and obviously the sugar started to drop, this, this started to lift and the, mem and the brain fog started to lift. Six months later, all of it's gone. And I still can't make reason as to why did I feel like that? There was nothing wrong, but I just did. I just felt that way. Depression went lifted by itself. So, yeah. 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 It's, it's mystifying, isn't it? I mean, you, like you say, you got a job and you got family, which brings me on to the next question. When you decided to change the way you eat drastically, what were your friends and family like? Were they supportive or did they think you'd lost your marbles? What did they think? Well, they, they thought when I went keto, it was quite extreme, you know, and then when you went, go carnivore they think you've lost the plot they honestly think you've lost the plot if you turn around a woman said i'm going 14 inch pizza covered in cheese and everything else they wouldn't bat an eyelid but if you say i'm just going to live on steak and eggs they look at you as if you've really gone mad but people that saw me on a regular basis then they started to see changes started to turn quite a few of them from being knocking it to now saying wow you look good and starting to be slightly inquisitive you know, and then you end up with a few people, then I just wait for them to come to me in the end, and then they just say, how do you do this? Can, can you help me? You know, so I've helped a few now, which is a really nice feeling. It's nice to be able to help people, and when you see the, the changes in their life, it's great, and it's it's not just a success rate, because it's every single person that's asked that step has improved. And it's, been, it's been quite nice, but the changes now, people see you are just if they haven't seen me for a year, the first thing they say is, are you well? Because you've lost so much weight. And I say, yes, I'm well. I say, good, because you look incredibly well. And I just say, thank you very much. And then they, they ask me how you've done it and what you're doing. And most of it, they give you a look of disbelief, I think, at first. Hey, now that, that's a really weird thing because I've never had anyone say to me, when I was really overweight, people said, are you well? Because... You're terribly overweight. You know, you must be sick. 
but you've lost some weight and you're at a normal weight and they think you're sick. So that's, that's quite a reversal, isn't it? It is very strange there, yeah, these. Yeah. So how are you helping people? Is it just sort of on a casual basis, like friends and family that have come to you then? Yeah, a bit, bit friends and family. Actually, it's been mainly friends and weirdly enough, customers I've worked at that I've done rooms for them, say, a year before, and they say, well, can you come back and do the bedroom for us or whatever for us next year? And then when I go back, they open the door and they, they second glance because they don't even think it's you. They think you've sent somebody else to do the room for them, you know? And then they ask, and then they, you know, quite normally two or three days into the job, they're like, actually, come and have a, come and have a drink with us. We need to chat to you about this. You end up helping them out, which is, which is quite a nice thing, really. You know, it's good. The bit I found strange was getting up in the morning and looking in the mirror and not recognising myself. It took me a time before I could actually recognise me as me because in my brain, I'm still still even that way a bit myself. No, in my brain, I'm still this photograph of this person that was really big, you know, and it's and well, extreme weight loss. And so I said, well, work it out. I've lost 106 pounds in roughly 112 weeks. Yeah, it hasn't that... really worked out to be much more than a pound a week. It was faster at first, but now it's just chip, 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 chip away. And my body composition's massively changed. You know, so, yeah, it's, it, that's the, because you're gaining, you seem to be gaining quite a bit of muscle as you do stuff. The job I do is quite physical anyway. So it just seemed inevitable I was going to gain muscle if I put the right fuel in. Yeah, I think I think that's one of the things when you sent me some before and after photos by email. I know it is you, but I can understand that even yourself looking back would be well, wow, I look like a completely different person. And I think that's true. That's a, because you you are. I mean, you know, all these illnesses and all these problems, when they go must admit, I, I looked at the photos and thought, well, it looks like a cloud has lifted off you, actually. that You look happier, basically, yeah. simple as that. Yeah, definitely. The pressures and the strains of life are just too much, really, when when you're just battling constant illness, isn't it? It's hard to deal with anything, really. You know, yeah. I, I, don't let it, I don't let it hold me down. So if there's a big family event, I'll go and I'll, I'll say to him, so for, we'll have this for the day. We, you know, we'll eat what we're going to have at that day, and then the next day I'll switch straight back to carnival. But I don't really... I used to stray for other people's benefit because it mm -hmm. felt more antisocial to, to not, you know, to not eat what they're doing. But normally it's a family thing, and everybody knows what I do now. So if we go out, I'll have, I'll have steak with two burgers and four eggs, please. Leave the chips and everything else off the plate. And that's fine. And they've just got used to it now. So, but yeah, social events was the most awkward at first, mm. you know, but now I think as everybody knows you, they, they, they kind of adapt with it. I think. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, I'm going to be a bit cheeky here. I'm assuming when you lost 106 pounds, it's all down to a calorie deficit and doing lots and lots of cardio. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, this okay so i'd lost weight in the past and, and i i'm really a person for figures and it's it's, it's a bit nonsense but i, I just I, I still to this day recall what i eat but i don't let it control what i eat if you see what i mean i just like to look back at the figures and think oh look that happened there and i ate all this and so on but it's been really good for reference points and in the past when i've lost weight i'd actually got down to things like 1500 calories a day and my weight loss had stopped and I could be on 1,500 a day for weeks and sit where I am and nothing would change. The only thing I've learned now is I'm not just depleting the calories, I'm depleting the nutrients at the same time. You eat less food, you're also getting a lot less nutrients. Your body needs them drastically. My average cal I don't care what the calories are, but because I log it, my average calorie intake sits at around 3,500 calories a day. And I use fat as my lever. If if I want weight to drop, I decrease the fat. But I'm not talking small amounts. I'm still on a 150, 200 grams of fat a day. Yeah. And my protein stays around 220 to 250 grams of protein a day. Carbs just don't exist apart from the 0.4 of a gram in an egg. 
you know. So that that's it. I I let the fat do the leverage. I keep my protein high and regardless. Don't count what I'm going to eat. I just eat what I fancy eating. I do have two vices. I haven't jacked in coffee, and I do like a bit of pepper, not like ground pepper, on the steak. But that that's it. And I have salt, pepper, coffee. That's that's my thing really. But I don't count calories. I've learned that that was irrelevant because how comes I can eat 2,000 calories a day more now and lose weight and 1,500 calories of rubbish and not drop an ounce? Yes, Doesn't that's it. It's, it is the type of food, and I mean, that's nailed on for virtually everyone that eats this yeah. way, and I think they get it. And I, I really like that you uh, snuck in one of the things I'm really big on. When you do a calorie deficit, it's not a calorie deficit. It's a nutrient deficit. You're, you're depleting yourself of electrolytes, you know, essential fats, essential proteins. It's uh, just, just just setting yourself up to fail, really. It's it's um, it's good that you put that into the conversation there. I really like that. Uh, a couple say, of other things. Sorry? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. They well, say low say? fat. Then you drastically decrease all your testosterone. Yeah. Because you're on a fat diet. And lose yeah. muscle with it. Absolutely. Which is crazy. Don't want to lose yeah. muscle weight. Yeah, I've been there. I mean, I remember being my leanest, and I look at pictures of myself and think, wow, I look gaunt and, and unwell. Terrible. Really yeah. terrible. And uh, that was when I was, you know, an advanced personal trainer and high carb and thought I knew what I was doing and realized now that I was completely lied to. I really yeah, want to get but... onto this. 25 years ago, you had a back injury and you lost feeling. I think we talked about that. I'd love you to just sort of put that on record. Yeah, I had a couple of years of a back injury. And eventually, after a lot of investigation, they said, oh, you've got, you've actually got a uh, slip disc. And tried all the exercises and going for a physio and all this kind of stuff, hoping to get it and go back in. But every now and then, it would shoot back in. And it was absolutely debilitating. You couldn't move. And so they decided to operate. And they did a... They don't do the procedure, I don't believe now. They did a chemical fuse, which was a bit like an epidural. And you sit there and inject this stuff into your spine with steroids in and massive painkillers that apparently last seven years. And then virtually the disc wears away. The two vertebrae touch and fuse themselves how they want to sit rather than it being done surgically. So they did that. But as a result of that, it's, they, I was told that it had severed the nerve because the nerve that went down to the right-hand side of the car from my right leg and the two little toes on that, that foot, they were completely dead. So that was 25 years ago. And I was just told that's because when the, ner- the vertebrae had fused and that part of the nerve had been severed full stop. Well, around four months into carnivore, I was sitting down in the evening and I'd noticed that the calf muscle on that leg wasn't twitching. It's been twitching for 25 years. It was almost like watching fingers under the skin moving. That had stopped. And not only that, I could feel my calf and the small toes. I didn't know how long it had come back for or when it came back, but it was just suddenly apparent that sense of feeling had returned after 25 years. And it's never disappeared since. It's come back, which I just think that's just like a miracle because I just accepted that was just part of how I was going to be from then on. But it, it went completely. Yeah, yeah. and it, this, this is the weird thing. I think we're quite similar, sort of similar age, and sim- we've had similar problems. And at 23, I was told I'd be in a wheelchair by the time I was 50. And I was shown a really convincing wow. image of my hip and my back and you know, I, I had a serious injury. This, this is never going to get better. Well, I'm 60 now and I play f- football three times a week. <laughs> no, nowhere near a wheelchair. So we did no. talk about lack of hope. When people give you these categoric statements, it takes hope away from people, which is one of the reasons that I like doing these interviews because there is hope. I'm not an idiot. You know, if you're in a severe car accident and, and your leg's broken in 12 places, it's not going to miraculously heal because you're eating meat. But in a lot of cases, these things that you're told are chronic, progressive, never going to get better. For instance, something like diabetes, type 2 diabetes, you definitely can reverse it with diet because people do in their hundreds and thousands, time in, time out. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you so far. I'm going through my list, my bingo list. 
Uh, one of the things we haven't spoken about is the eye shooting pains, which oddly enough came up in one of our community meetings last night. So could you speak a little okay. bit to the eye shooting pains? Well, I, I could be out and about doing anything at all. And regularly, once a, once a week, there'd be no warning it was going to come. I would literally get what, what felt like a hot needle being pushed into my eye. And you'd, you'd hold your eye for a second and it would last... 15, 20 seconds and it would be gone and the vision would be a little bit almost kind of sparkly in that eye for a, few, for a minute or two then it would go but the pain was so severe so I could only ever think it was something like a, maybe it was a blood vessel that had burst or something like that but they it's all stopped no more doesn't I haven't had them for two years gone so yeah it, I can't, don't know and nobody ever gave me the explanation to what it was well, you know, so. I mean, there's plenty of things it could be. I mean, one of the things is, obviously, if you've got type 2 diabetes, you get retinal neuropathy. So that's all your, your, you know, your peripheral nerves start to have inflammation and then you have problems there. So it could have been that. But anyway, you've reversed that. So I don't think that's a, yeah. a big issue for you to worry about in the future. And I, I hear that all the time as well. People, some have had, uh, you know, injections every six weeks and they've been told they're going blind and then they go this, to this way of eating. Six weeks later, at the eye doctor, and told, "Oh, come back in a year. Everything looks so much better." So, I think we've sort of covered everything. I, I think the last thing, and they might be linked, is you used to cough up water out of your lungs and get breathless. Has that gone completely? Yeah, that's gone completely. That was all to do apparently with me having an enlarged heart, and that the, the pipework doesn't get any bigger that comes off your heart. So this huge, powerful heart was trying to pump water through small pipes. And it couldn't, so it was backing up and pushing the blood back through my lungs, apparently, that was filtering the blood. And when it, when it filled my lungs, it was a clear fluid. So I'd be coughing this clear fluid up and be out of breath because of it. That's gone. All gone. Everything. The medications for that have been taken away, everything. So, yeah, yeah. That, that's all changed. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. 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 So you yeah, mentioned really. a few influencers that have helped you through this journey. So... Just let's, let's name check who's really helped you. Okay, well, it's, it's more like thanking them for literally thanking them for saving my life. Uh, Sean Baker, Ken Berry, Anthony Chaffee, yourself, and Ken Carnival. They're the main, I've done a lot of research into who I thought knew what they were talking about before I even put my foot in the water. And, and those five, you're, you're the people that I really, really followed and done my research. I would listen to you with earplugs in at work all day, every day, for months before I thought, okay, now I know what I'm doing. Now I know that now I know what to expect, or I hope I expect to happen. And yeah, and it it did happen and exceeded itself really. You know, it went way beyond what I thought could possibly be, you know, changed in my life. So yeah, thank you, all of you. It's a it's just a lovely thing for you to put me in that list and I, I feel absolutely humbled because they are amazing people that you mentioned there. I'll take it gleefully because that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to get the message out there and i'm trying to pe help people with their health so it's very difficult i'm not great with taking compliments but i will definitely take that mark thank you so much for for saying that that's really great thank you for inviting me let's let's open it up to the last question you've said you've seen a few of my interviews so i tend to ask this to a lot of people if someone is watching and they're on the fence about carnivore what would you yeah. say to them Put your toe in the water for 30 days. Anyone can do it for 30 days. Just put your toe in the water for 30 days. See what changes you get. Because that's what I did. And I got to 30 days and, and what I felt in 30 days was so remarkable. I thought, I've got to do 100 just to find out. And once I hit the 100, there was no turning back. There was no way I was going to change this way. Yet. Nothing... Nothing tastes as good as healthy feels, full stop. You know, and then when you feel that good, no food's worth giving that in for, you know. And once they've had a sample of how good they can feel, I, I doubt many people would reverse back to the way they were eating before, you know. Yeah, that's great advice. I started with a 30-day challenge, and here I am, six, nearly six years later. It's the best thing, best thing I ever did. So, Mark, thanks, thanks for the interview. It's really been a pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen.